Hey guys, this is Whitney with Lights, Camera, No. What's up, everybody? It's Lauren, and this week we are discussing the 2019 horror thriller Ready or Not, starring Samara Weaving, uh, Adam Brody, Andy McDowell, Mark O'Brien, Henry Cherney, a slew of other people. Um, and this week we have a very special guest, Robert from the Crooked Table podcast. Welcome, Robert. What? Thank Welcome you for having me. I am I am ready to discuss this movie. <laughs> I, I see what he did there. He's going to fit right in. <laughs> Ready or not. <laughs> here we go. Um, so this movie was like super hyped up for me because first of all, I know you guys know my love for Robert Sheehan, but for Robert Sheehan, there was Adam Brody. The one and only. The one and only Seth Cohen, which if you're listening, Adam, I'm sorry. I know you don't like to be referred to as Seth Cohen anymore. You've moved on. I However, mean, you can't. You I haven't do that. I haven't it's moved on. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't pick and choose when your fan base moves on. I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so he, um, as soon as I see his name pop up in anything, I will like search it out and go watch it. So like just last night I rented kid detective because he was in it. Was like, <laughs> he has a new movie out. I was like, I'm going to go watch it. It was very good by the way. Kid detective. It's very, it's like very like, Grown up Encyclopedia Brown. It's like a dash of comedy and a little bit of like noir. It was very I'm, good. I'm intrigued. Uh, I he's the executive producer on it. I think. Was... Okay, and he he's in it. I assume mm -hmm. he's the main guy in it. Okay, but he was a kid detective, and now he's grown up, and he's not. He's he's kind of washed out, and people don't look up to him as much, you know, because he's uh. not finding. I mean, he was kind of scary in this movie. He was he all he often plays a douchebag, but like, not even he just looked, like yeah. tormented and troubled. And you know, it makes sense why he's, we'll get he's to that. He he's become the the guy that just randomly shows up in in mm -hmm. movies for me over the last <laughs> few years. Because I said I said to my wife while we were watching Ready or Not, I said. Oh, I'm Brody. I've seen him in something recently. She's like the OC, and I'm like, no, I don't. Think, I've never seen the OC. It's a movie. And and I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's right, promising, promising young woman, young woman. Shazam. Oh yeah, like, he is mm. every all these random things he just like shows up in now. And uh, and I, I even kind of forgot he was in this until the the credits. I was like, oh yeah, that's right, the dude's oh. everywhere. Jeez. Oh, I see, I do, I know him when I see him because Adam Brody, but <laughs> he's a looker. <laughs> um, he is, but I feel like he's now like he was very worried about getting typecast as like the geeky like approachable guy who was like still adorable like seth cohen but now he's like getting he plays a lot of douchebag villain types like in jennifer's body he's yeah. like as soon as i heard he was in it i was like yes i can't wait to see what he does and then he comes out and he's like a satanic worship like satan worshiping like musician who's ready to sell his soul and kill a virgin but like he makes it work and it, you don't think I, oh oh no seth cohen i mean maybe you do but <laughs> i do <laughs> I'm real disappointed. Just like, in wow, him. look at that talented actor. Well, they're weaponizing his his like uh, affability, which yeah, is what I think is interesting a, about it. That's a good way to put it. It's like Robert Sheehan. He's the bad guy in Geostorm. Didn't like that. <laughs> I was like, nope. What are you doing, Rob? This is not you. You're better than this. <laughs> I can't. Um, okay, before we go any further, I guess we should let you read your song. What do we say we were going to start doing from now on? I, for, I don't summary. know. There's a song. Yes. It was supposed to be a summary song. I don't and there think was the end motions. <laughs> There's going to be. time. It's time for your summary. I didn't um, create a compelling one of a Frankenstein of summaries this time because I just found a decent one online. That's okay. Anyway. Ahem. <clears throat> Grace couldn't be happier after she marries the man of her dreams at his family's luxurious estate. There's just one catch. She must now hide from midnight until dawn while her new in-laws hunt her down with guns, crossbows, and a variety of other antiquated weaponry. As Grace desperately tries to survive the night, she, she soon finds a way to turn the tables on her not-so-lovable relatives. Dun-dun-dun! In-laws. Yeah. <laughs> they almost... Okay. As we say every week, spoiler-heavy podcast. So spoilers abound from this point on. If you haven't seen Ready or Not, turn off this episode watch it and then come back and listen if you're watching now don't just leave <laughs> go leave <laughs> leave come back goodbye come back but don't just leave yeah um they, they almost cut that line out at the end 
where yeah. the very last line. That would have been like, such a shame. I know they were afraid it was too cheesy. And I was like, nope, it was the perfect amount of cheese. Like it was. The but perfect- were they going to yeah, exactly. just say nothing or were they going to pepper something else in there? Uh, I read that originally they were going to kill her and it was like a way darker. Oh, yeah, I did read that. Ended up happening. I'm glad they didn't. I mean, I, I liked I didn't think it was too cheesy. I thought it was like the perfect because yeah, this is the same agree. girl from um, I don't know if you've seen the babysitter, Robert, but this is the same uh, Samara Weaving. Uh, OK, um, I've seen Bill and Ted face the music like six times. In the she's last in that three too. Months. OK, yeah. she's in that. So, yeah, I, but I saw this first. So this was my introduction to her. Oh, okay, I love her. Babysitter had the same kind of like overtones to it, like of cheesy, like violence like comedy also. horror yeah um yeah. she nice. is i'm gonna look it up real quick but i'm pretty sure like she's like well on her way to being like a scream queen because she is like in so many horror movies yeah um she does a good she, job i think oh yeah i think she's yeah. excellent yeah for like, sure i think she looks just like margot robbie but oh she was in um mayhem the movie that was kind of like belco experiment yeah where they're like killing people in an office complex or whatever with you know, Glenn from Walking Dead. She, um, I don't know. She has this like, she's likable, but she's also relatable. She's not like um, the stereotypical scream queens of the past where like, they're like the good girl that mm-hmm. has never done any yeah. wrong until she has to be a badass because someone's trying to kill her. <laughs> She's Lori just like Strode. generally, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly who I was picturing in my head. <laughs> well, I gotta go home and study, guys. You guys go on to the party. Yeah, no, she's not Lori Strode. She's just like, she has, she comes in badass and just yeah, escalates exactly. from there. <laughs> exactly. So, as like when this movie starts out, I feel like there's several hints from Adam Brody's character, Daniel. Uh, kind of hinting at her like you don't want to do this like you should probably like get out while you can like he says a couple of different things like letting her know or trying to give her a clue that this is not your happy family that you think you're seeing we're not just rich assholes we're evil but they also on top of it make him unreliable by saying oh your alcoholic brother or whatever they call him so you're like can Mm -hmm. we trust Uh this guy oh see that, that was my like perspective of it I got yeah, me you just saw Adam Brody. Yeah, and like I okay. <laughs> Anything you say, sir. Yeah, they he, they play the whole. Uh, oh, you know, you're too good for this family or mm-hmm. whatever. He doesn't, you know, yeah. Get out while you can, but it's also yeah, it's played more as she's like, oh, that's weird. Okay, even, I guess he's the black sheep. Right. Even the mom does it though. Which he kind of is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, anybody lo- that marries, well, he didn't marry in, but the mom married in, and you get that like you know if you do everything right and play by the rules kind of situation like we will accept you well why do you want to put yourself in that situation even the mom says to her is like oh you think your blood's not blue enough that they thought the same thing of me and the mom seemed like she was kind of hyping her up like the mom seemed like she really liked her at first annie mcdowell's Mm -hmm. character yeah and um i totally thought she was gonna end up i always had a like a hint that daniel was gonna be the good guy that helped her because he was so like he was the one that had the most interaction with her i guess yeah is why Mm -hmm. but then i also thought that annie mcdowell's character was gonna be like he she was gonna end up helping her too but no it was never gonna be that that aunt my god that oh no no helena bird looking woman (laughs) she did look like a bird (laughs) she was so angry she's the one in the beginning yeah, I was going to say, that's the importance of that prologue scene with Daniel and, uh, what is it, Alex, I think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the, and and Helene, who looks like a normal person there, and then you cut right. to her now, and she's just like, right. looks like she stepped out of a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> but did you guys catch that they call her great Aunt Helene or Helena Helene or whatever, and then the dad calls her sis? So I'm like, mm-hmm. then that's not your great aunt. That's yeah, I was trying to aunt. understand because yeah. it seems and so- how did she age so much? Right. And the kids are just suddenly <laughs> like 30. Yeah. <laughs> she aged a ton and like Annie McDowell didn't age. And she would have been around the same age. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that that I okay. had a hard maybe time. Maybe it was timeline, to, but maybe it was to like throw us off or whatever. Um, probably. 
so the first night when after they get married or whatever (laughs) i like how she how grace is just like thinks it's weird that they are gonna play a game on their wedding night (laughs) but she goes along with it i would have been like Mm. no like but I, I mean, I guess because she was a foster kid, like she's an orphan, basically. Uh, yeah. 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 I had that in my notes, too. There's so many points in this where you're like, what? why would she put up with that? And like, mm-hmm. well, they, they set up right at the top that, yeah, that she's a, been in a lot of foster families. She's always really wanted a family to belong mm-hmm. to. So mm-hmm. you're like, well, I guess it's plausible that then she'd be willing to jump through more hoops than normal in order to yeah. join a family. And at that point, you could chalk a lot of it up to, well, you know, rich people be weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that is, <laughs> Which is true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, like, they were, it was, I mean, it would, could, I would have probably just been like, yeah, this is weird. You guys want to do this, but I mean, but I would be texting my friends the whole time. Yes. <laughs> you won't believe what I'm about to do. <laughs> I have to play hide and go seek. We're about to play hide wedding. and seek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That would definitely be a tweet too. Rich people be weird. <laughs> <laughs> Documenting my <laughs> torment. I love the sister though. The sister cracks me up, and I want to say like crazy that. spastic yes. one. The yes. one that's like doing coke all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When she meets her, she's just like constantly like wiping her nose like yeah, for the first time. Insane. And yeah. then her her husband is actually really funny too. He's the one with the crossbow. He's like yes. sitting in the bathroom. Me, learning to or getting to know your crossbow <laughs> like watching the video <laughs> that fun fact those were the um the writers of the script mm-hmm. i saw that yeah <laughs> which i was like oh cute little cameo i love a cameo i do too i do too um so did you guys take and lauren and i talked a little bit about this did you all take it as the card that was given to her or comes out like that is the only card that someone would die at like that's the one bad card correct okay yeah that's what i thought like i want to make sure i just wasn't sure if that because my question was is hide and seek the only like deadly game in that deck of i took it to be that way okay yeah that's the way i understood it as well because they're all like i played old maid i played chess yeah, and they're which, all sitting which all there. sound fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's like I, I watching it this time to, to prepare for this episode. I was looking for things that didn't quite make sense or character decisions that were questionable. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I feel like they all fall back on Mr. LaBelle. It's like, mm-hmm. why did you make why is this the, the situation? Yeah. Why is hide and seek the only deadly game? And where did you get that catchy ass theme song for the <laughs> game? <laughs> And that's another thing. Were there theme songs for every other option of game? Yeah. And right. also hide and seek is not like when you say like, oh, what would be a deadly game? You know, kickball or or not kickball. Um, dodgeball would come to mind first. Yeah. Maybe tag. I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot more. Like hide and seek was such a random choice in terms of games to die by. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I feel like this movie does. And I don't know. And obviously I don't, I guess the movie you're next. Have you, either of you all seen that? Is that the, um, uh, the dark, the Hulu one? No, it's, um, it's a film that came out like a few years ago. It is almost like, it reminds me so much of this movie, but without the humor, like this movie, a girl is going to meet her boyfriend's family. And once she gets there, people like, it's not that she's, hiding from the family per se but she is being like the family is being tracked by these killers and there's a twist at the end that is similar it reminds it's not supernatural but it just has that same like feelings and i feel like i got almost just ripped my headphones off my um it's like the same way ready or not is but just with no humor okay and so when I, when this, and I, that's what I wanted your next to be when I watched it, I was like, oh, I bet this could be kind of funny. And then it is not. But ready or not stepped in and, and filled yeah. that void for you. And yeah. saved it for me. <laughs> Which, and by the way, they a hundred percent would have called this hide and seek if there wasn't a movie in mm-hmm. like what, 2005 or oh, yeah. whatever with Robert De Niro. Yeah. I think they actually, lo- they, didn't they like look into it, right? They like looked into calling it that, correct? Yeah. I think yeah. So. Yeah, I like, like it better ready or not. I do too. It's more. Yeah, I think I think it is too. It fits the movie better, I think. So 
the poor can we talk about the the um what do you want to call them the maids or the baby like or the oh god the yeah um yeah. Like, pairs i don't know they what to call could them. not win for losing it well, was- because they had that crazy drugged up sister running yeah. around that house that, yeah she, she was took, the yeah, problem she, she took out two of them with the shotgun blast and the crossbow and then <laughs> the other one just kind of got stuck in the dumb waiter yeah i guess she, but um, yeah, she kind of deserved yeah, that was the only one that i was like all right good like you're a problem right you're not a friend <laughs> right because she the other ones are just coming her. in the room what's going on <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's the other thing when they hire these people are they like okay now listen she might draw a card tonight and we're gonna play a deadly game of hide and seek if you see her say she's in here like do they know the rules i well yeah, and yeah. what were they, they everyone was just real lax about their duties either too like mm-hmm. it was you know your one job like literally your one job was to keep to watch the kids and then one nanny is like she falls asleep and wakes she's up Susan. yeah yeah and then I don't, I can't even remember how Daniel's wife, what was her name? Charity? Yeah. Yeah. She loses Alex. It's like, everybody's just like running around, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that really benefits Grace as she maneuvers her way out of this house. Well, they're all super inept. None of them counted on this happening. They were all like, oh, what are the chances of it being that card? And Anne Helene, I think, is the only one. It's like, I told you, he saw Mr. LaBelle that one time. It's going to be that card. I'm ready for it. Look at this hair. I'm ready for my <laughs> And she, like, was, she had that, like, weird looking axe. Yeah, like, she was ready those, to go. It was like a battle axe or something. What are those called? They have <laughs> yeah. a name. Um, so I feel like that Mr. LaBelle chose that card for grace because she because he knew grace would not fit in with this family i feel like he knew that grace was too good grace had a soul and she was not willing she would not have willingly gave it up like i like that like thought i didn't think of that when when i was watching it but you saying that it makes a whole lot of sense well she and when he appears to her yeah yeah yeah, he appears to her at the end he's like good job i'll see you on the other side yeah have a nice life <laughs> like you yeah. did it like you're not for me you wouldn't and even daniel says to charity at one point he i think charity says she's not one of us and he's like of course darling she has a soul yes in like, the very beginning at yeah. the wedding mm-hmm. yeah so i think he knew too like she was too good like she was a good person where all of these people were just terrible people like i you don't i wish that we could have heard like a backstory for the rest of them yeah. like the mm. in-laws uh because i know charity at one point says you know where i came from like yeah you can't be mad at me for wanting this life because right. apparently she had a terrible childhood and stuff so but grace was just even though she had a terrible childhood and apparently with all the foster homes and stuff she was still i think that was just to um like parallel like okay charity they both came from bad childhoods but like grace mm-hmm. is taking the high road and charity's mm-hmm. just a dirt ball who yeah. doesn't care about anybody else right right even her husband like she just shot him yeah. how yeah. could you not care about adam birdie <laughs> <laughs> i mean Her word to yeah, the Whitney, wise, Whitney, are you doing Layton okay Easter, like... <laughs> <laughs> i mean i was a little upset when he died but... <laughs> yeah that was rough it. i really thought i mean i didn't see him making it out of it but i didn't i didn't either See him going that way i don't know that was hard to watch but i was glad i was like he proved himself mm-hmm. like towards the end like maybe he wasn't a terrible person and they were oh, all yeah. gonna explode by the end of spoilers yeah obviously. so he did uh, anyway that. so yeah <laughs> which i read that they used um like food products to make that plate. yes mm. so it was Makes like sense, bananas yeah. and caramel and caramel sauce caramel sauce for the blood and they just dyed it red mm-hmm and then I don't remember what else. There was something. Sounds like, like a Sunday. Strawberry. Minus the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Right. So sign me up. Yeah. Yeah, Watching it, this this is the second time I had watched it because I, I watched, I saw this in theaters when it initially came out. Watching mm-hmm. it the second time, I was, I, I was waiting to see how the movie was going to handle the kids because I forgot. So of oh, course yeah. they run out of the room and then you hear the yeah. three explosions of <laughs> yeah, them and like, their mom was like, wow, the movie went there. <laughs> like they found a way to skate by with that. Like two little ones and then one big one. Cause it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Sister. <laughs> um, Those kids were awful though. Yeah. They were awful. Yeah. Like, well, they were one, raised to be awful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like that's what I said. She's like, I'm so proud of you. I know. (laughs) And I, I know you probably don't know Robert, but like, I'm weird about like Satan stuff in movies. I'm usually like Mm. all shy away from it. It's not my fave. And Lauren was like, I was surprised you like, like this movie. Cause at the end they're like screaming like hail, yeah. hail satan well, yeah they but just like very briefly up. they're you know they're doing this as a sacrifice for satan but yeah and they do say hail satan the it's not like kids. a main theme of no. yeah, the movie but i was like oh no like that well, and like dead dogs that w- they're yeah. whitney's out mm. <laughs> yeah dead yeah, dogs yeah. don't do it um no, she likes this movie adam brody but, i think really helped it does <laughs> it does um but did you guys notice at the end when they are getting ready to sacrifice her the sound she makes when she is screaming, she sounds like a goat. Really? Mm. She sounds just like a I'll goat go back and, when and she's screaming. Yeah. She does this weird, huh. like, it ha- sounds exactly like a goat, like bleeding, like, like screaming. Oh God. That's Not weird. bleeding. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. It's yeah. when she like Maybe hops off that. the table and she's like, she has the knife. And well, she's, and like, that's. Like, oh, yeah. And she's like grunting at them. And yeah. 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 They have goats in that like barn, right? Yeah, because I'm sure they have to have these mini sacrifices throughout the year to keep <laughs> them going. Like, yeah, that was another thing that, again, my watching it with my wife who hadn't seen this before that she brought up. She's like, so they do this thing whenever someone marries in. But why were they talking also about killing goats? Like how many like how often do they have to do something satanic to maintain this, you know, oh, curse, yeah. I guess. I mean, it must be a lot of goats. goats down there so yeah that is the worst and, part and of this movie. dead bodies too oh yeah there were dead bodies which i wonder i was like who are these dead bodies are they just other random sacrifices the guy from the beginning with the arrows uh, yes i just Charles assumed it was like other failed was what guy from the beginning Tra- uh, helene's uh husband of like 10 <gasps> yeah. minutes i guess how, minutes. Would he have, how would he have still been down there they don't, I don't the, know. That's the, what I'm wondering. Why is nobody looking yeah. for these missing people? <laughs> Why had he not decayed until like nothingness at that point? I mean, he was, to be fair, he was a skeleton with like, oh, the arrows yeah, he in. was, he was, he was but, decaying. Oh, I never caught that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's when she, this is the part that I was referencing earlier with the upper body strength. This is where I would have gotten out of the, she oh, fights yeah. out of the house and, you know, she does what she tears the, the bottom of her dress off and she's already got her sneakers on because her loving husband brought them to her and he's going to help her escape. And she's out of the house and she ends up in this, that's when the kids come out. Right. And they like, the, well, kid, the kid shoots her in the hand. And she punches yep. him right in the face, yep. which a little jerk. Done. Yeah, yeah, and I read him. something about her being Samara weaving or whatever her last name is, being real nervous about yeah. shooting that scene because she had to like pretend to punch a kid. Oh yeah. But anyway, she punches the kid and then falls she falls back into this pit of decaying goo. Yeah. People, animals, yeah. whatever. She's she's not giving up though. She's gonna crawl her way out. And what does she do? She puts the hand that has a hole in it right through a freaking nail and i was like she does it on purpose i think i mean using that hand to like pull i don't think she did it on purpose oh i I did it was the movie was getting you ready for it and building up to that moment so we knew that was going to happen but i don't think she did it would be smart if she were that would be smart i don't think she could see it from that oh i thought she i always thought she did it on purpose and was like using it as like leverage (sighs) Oh, that would hurt Ooh, so bad. And worse. her scream too. Her scream was like, this is like some great yeah. A acting right here. But she, this is, I, I felt that in my soul, her scream. This is where me and Lauren would fail because we failed that stupid American presidential fitness test. In yeah, you would school. find my body hanging by the I nail. Wouldn't, I wouldn't get up there. Like <laughs> I wouldn't the be, nail. <laughs> couldn't do a pull up in kindergarten or third grade. Still can't do one now. So, I mean, just, it was never going to happen. It was never meant to be. <laughs> I'd like to think though, like with that adrenaline coursing through my system. What about with the assistance of the nail? <laughs> of the hole. Would that, would that help? The nail with the assist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think I could muster the energy to like survive, but I don't know. I'd have to be. That or certain death. Yeah. To yeah. Find out. I, yeah. Maybe. I mean, maybe there were some footholds in there too, where she could like get her feet in to like, I didn't even see that. I think cause they show her feet kind of kicking around and I'm like, this lady needs, she's got a, she's got a push. Mm-hmm. Oh. She, she did it. She did it. 
That was the part I had to tell my friend Kim. I was like, don't look. Close your eyes. This is not a good part. Because they show it too. Yeah. I can't watch that part. Yeah. No. There's that part and there's the part where she and Andy McDowell fight at the end and she turns her head into a bloody pulp. I can't watch Mm -hmm. that part. I turn my head at that part too. Mainly I stared right at it just to torture myself. You were like, I'm gonna, (laughs) I, I want a nightmare tonight. Thank you. I don't, yeah, Robert, I'm the baby of the group. I do not like gore, um, Uh but I will force myself to watch it. And then I will shut my eyes at night and try to go to bed and think about it. (laughs) (laughs) But I stared right at it. I will 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 have this nightmare tonight if it kills me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So at the end, or not the end, but when I guess Adam... Or I shouldn't, I say Adam, like we're friends. Like, you know, Adam. <laughs> um, Not his character movie. His yeah, character name, yeah, exactly. Adam. Daniel. Um, he, I didn't realize that he knew his dad was out there. I mean, I knew after he says it, but I didn't realize that he was setting her up. I didn't either. To catch yeah. her. But I guess no, I didn't in the long term, he was doing it just to like. Establish trust with the family and then to get her out over later. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah, he's you don't realize until you watch this movie that hide and seek is a is a long, deep strategy <laughs> game. <laughs> it is. I think is what it is. I mean, I really wonder. I mean, I guess she would have been screwed if she stayed in that dumb waiter the entire time. I, yeah, I think they would have looked in there eventually. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. And to then think. she gets out off the grounds, ripping her dress and like her entire back. On, yes. the, on the, the metal gate but she gets out briefly mm-hmm. uh and then you know some douchebag blows past her just like oh yeah <laughs> uh, and and she gets the Mate, one that moment would be to, like, yes <laughs> angrier in the road <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh, uh, and if it wasn't for that stupid like butler guy oh he I was the like, worst he was so irritating With like his Bah, 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 bah. like stop but that part was yeah. funny where they're like watching it like they're watching his video <laughs> like turn down the music you idiot she's behind <laughs> you yeah what did she do she like mule kicked him like mm-hmm. it was insane yeah. yeah yeah i think so i feel like i would have i also have a very like overconfident like belief that i can get away in situations like this like i'm overly confident in myself i feel like i would have done the same thing like i in reality, yeah. I probably wouldn't. I would probably die within like 10 minutes. There wouldn't be a movie if it was about me. <laughs> but I'm saying like- And she died. Yeah. In my head. And I want I'm my like, money back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People would be real disappointed. Lights, camera, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she gets it. And I don't understand how she doesn't die in the car crash. Mm-hmm. Because she she wasn't wearing it's not that the seatbelt was gonna save her, but right, she was wasn't wearing a seatbelt, too, right? Like, <laughs> no, she was flopping all around that no, car. I don't think so. Yeah. Cause she's the hero of the movie, I think is the answer. Mm-hmm. And there were so many, God, how many times did she almost die in this movie? Like three? Oh, there was a lot. Yeah. At least, yeah. I'm trying to think. Because well, and then I really thought, I don't know when not daniel alex was that his name alex is the mm. yeah the husband when the i don't husband. know when he turned because i felt like Neither he was real, I. I felt like I, he was really trying to help her me too i i uh i think the conversation with his mom he sort of he knew inside that he was probably going to stay loyal to the family which is why he <laughs> rolls a tear and I, I honestly think it's uh, when walking, standing over Grace, having just beaten his mother to a pulp. That's yes. when he's just like, okay, no, that's that my, that's my mom. It. Yeah. He, he went all, it. he went full, uh, full Iron Man. He's like, no, she killed my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that that's critical that he catches her in that moment. Otherwise, I think his alliances probably would have been still with Grace. But at the same time, like it makes sense why she would snap after having these people murder her all yeah. night, she smash a little too much and get a little too into it. Cause I think she's starting, obviously uh, when everybody explodes, she's starting to crack <laughs> by, by that point in the movie, like sanity wise. Oh now yeah. That now that we're having this conversation though, I'm beginning to think he was always trying, like he was in on it with the family from the beginning because 
I feel like I, at first I thought like he thinks this thing, this whole sacrifice thing is a crock. But now I don't know. I feel like he kind of knew he could pull one over on Grace and married her, went through the motions, was like, oh, no, you pulled the wrong card. And just I don't know. I feel like the whole thing was a trap on his end. Really? I don't know. Well, this I mean, just it's, but facilitating this conversation right now, I didn't think that watching the movie, I thought, oh, they're in love and this, he's going to, he doesn't buy into this nonsense. Because at the, when they, nothing happened at first at the end, I was like, see people, you're insane. <laughs> no, and <laughs> and th- then that's what, they explode. <laughs> that's yeah. what really, really won me over on this movie is it, it's my favorite kind of twist where it's like, are these people crazy or mm-hmm. is there really like some kind of supernatural force happening? At yeah. the end, the answer is basically yes. Yeah, <laughs> both can be true. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, so that's he, what I like too. No, but he blames her for. He's like, "Well, you wanted to get married, kind of," and she's like, "This is my fault." <laughs> yeah, and when he, he does say that, that you're like, well. "What?" Um, I don't know though. I kind of think that it is when she he sees his mom, like dead. Like yeah, I think that, that does is, make sense. Yeah, that's that's kind of when. That's so kind he of, just wanted to see her die in a revenge sense. You think? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of think that he just realized like when he saw that and like he was, he realized how much he actually did love his mom that he was still, he was like, yeah, you're right. I am part of this family. Like, this is what we do. Or he was teetering on the edge between Grace and his family mm-hmm. and then seeing, mm-hmm. thinking that Grace is good. She's my, my ticket out of this. Yeah. You know, the whole, yeah. the whole conversation early on is like, Ooh, bring him, bring him back to the family, bring him back into the fold. And, and when yeah, that like happens, maybe... he's like, Oh no, Grace is tainted too. Forget it. I'll stick with my family. At least I understand kind of what's going on there. I yeah. wonder if he had helped her, would he have lived? Like, cause well, he that you know, is, kind of turn a new leaf. Oh yeah. So that's kind of what Mike thought. My husband, he was watching, we were watching it and he noticed that she, he did not, that Alex didn't explode until she threw the ring at him and said, I want a divorce. And when the ring hit him, that's when, and he was like, oh, he was like, so they did like, if he was married to her, he would have been okay. And I was like, I don't think so, hmm. but now I'm like maybe because it was exactly when she took the ring off yeah I was wondering yeah. like they they all went at different rates mm-hmm. and I was like I was real Mr. stressed and Bale was just toying with them <laughs> that was really yeah, stressful was. to watch but you know with Anna McDowell like think about it. like yes like ignore the fact that they're terrible people and that they are you know downright evil she really was just like a mother like think about it at the basic like it was like a mother's love she was like you can't i don't want anybody to hurt my family and i'll do anything it takes to keep them safe so i mean she was willing to kill someone who wasn't part of her family it's love of family or in the case of people like charity love of power slash Mm -hmm. money Money. slash whatever and it's funny because this was like a this movie was part of and probably one of the more underrated parts of this whole trend in 2019 of like social commentaries about the rich and like class system you had like parasite knives out us like there were a bunch of movies kind of touching on that same theme and i think that's part of why you buy into every pretty much everybody's motivation here it's like they're mm-hmm. all either trying to protect their family or their status or get the hell out of there before yeah. they get killed right well they said that the this movie was inspired by the 2016 election mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like the, the privilege and the entitlement yeah, right. and how dangerous they can be and it's funny because i feel like a lot of the movies we've talked about maybe not a lot maybe just the one but we've talked about a lot of movies that have been inspired by like the state of politics or like yep. the state of the world like um yeah. what was it dark water and we were talking yeah. about well it was haunted houses in general like yes. we, there's a theme where trapped yeah like with with haunted house movies a lot of it has to do with like um recessions and like <clears throat> the bubble bursting and all that stuff where people would buy these houses and then they were stuck they couldn't get out of them and mm-hmm. that so that's subconsciously lived like that's everybody's biggest fear you move into a haunted house and then you're you can't go anywhere like you're stuck right. living there so i'm sure yeah like we've done a couple movies lately where it's like oh this is the bigger picture which i always like when they do that in general yeah yeah same. it's fun so um yeah i don't have a bunch of like trivia about this movie like i know that 
something happened with Samara Weaving and um, Andy McDowell where she accidentally hit her when they were oh, yeah. filming and she was yeah. afraid she was going to get fired. Yes. And from... Andy McDowell really hurt her back too. Like, yeah. She says she walks funny in the movie and I didn't, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it. I didn't it. either. Yeah. She like um, didn't want to like lose her job, but she like did something where she like twisted her back and she was like, no, I'm good. I'm going to power through the scenes. <laughs> I guess so I, I like go back and like watch her walk but she said it like <laughs> it kind of I guess people just took it as like oh that's how rich people walk <laughs> yeah there you go that's, that's how, how the rich do it. Into it um yeah I think that about I read the um th- the one thing about the masks in the beginning that they wore for whatever the answer it was the 80s yeah, yeah. But that, that was, um, I don't know if you guys are Twilight Zone people, but that was yep. inspired by that masked episode where the guy, yes. um, I think the premise is like, he puts, the, the, it's a dad and like, he's trying to figure out where his wealth goes and his kids are all greedy. So he makes so he them like makes wear them... these masks. <laughs> so like, why, figure out <laughs> why couldn't you just hair? remember their names, Bob? Like, <laughs> <laughs> why do you need a mask to tell you which one's greedy? Just write it down in a notebook. Yeah, one one was real vain. I think one was real greedy. One I don't Sarah's know, was... the vain one. Like, I mean, I don't know. The mask <laughs> just seemed. seemed but they like did. They were like a, a spitting image of Twilight Zone masks. Yes, they were. Yeah, I read that too. I think that was about it, though. Like trivia wise. Oh, and, I read oh. one more thing trivia wise. No, keep going. Um, the mansion. Did you read about the mansion? Mm, I don't think that so. they filmed at the exterior was the same one that they shot um billy madison the like exterior shots i did not know that and then the interior was from someplace casa loma castle um which was in movies like x-men it was like the exterior of this or the interior of the school oh yeah my um Charles xavier school they, yes. they use they have used that building in so many movies and shows it's kind of crazy we went to uh toronto like last you know pre pre covid obviously mm-hmm. and uh, and and we actually went there and did the tour of, of nice Barcelona and everything it's really it's really cool like a historical you know site uh so yeah it, yeah my wife brought that up to me i didn't even notice we went there and i didn't even notice it was <laughs> you didn't pick up <laughs> like, no i know right i like we were right in that room what are you talking about um <laughs> But yeah, so no, that it, they they dress it up completely different, and it's it's really cool to to see uh, just how often they've used that in on film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they reuse a lot of stuff. Like it's that one house on like the Home Alone house. I feel like it's used in a lot of stuff too. The one that yeah, like, I think so. It's this. What is it? It's like the same house that's in. I don't know. It's probably John. There's Hughes also to, like, Back to the Future, like that exact same town square as yes, <sighs> Twin Pines or something else or something. There's there's that that center square like that main oh like, in like where the, is the exact yeah. same and some other movie I forget now. Very obvious one and I'm that you but that. yeah you know that when you see it and you're like oh my god yeah. Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always yeah. Back to the Future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a perfect movie. It is. It, it really is. is. Nothing wrong with it. No, really, like I want to say that they did. There's a course at like USC or something where they talk about how Back to the Future is like a perfect script. I there's would like, like to course take that, that studies just it. I think yeah, just I'll, sit in on it. Yeah, I hope I'm not making that up. I feel like I'm not. I'll that be googling. Legit. Yeah, it does sound legit. I trust you. I just I want to take did, it. Like take one my thing money. I wanted to bring up too is that did you did either of you look into the fact that the directors of this movie are doing the next Scream? And yes, do you think that yes. that's a good fit? Like, what is yes. your thoughts on that? Well, Adam Brody was in Scream 4. So, <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> so excellent choice. <laughs> excellent choice, guys. Um, no, I think it'll be great. Uh, Scream is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. So I hope that they, and I felt like they really, like, not that they had anything to do with it, but I felt like the series really revived itself with the fourth one. Um, mm-hmm. Brought it back to that, like, yeah, feeling agreed. of, you know, the original. And I am super excited to see what's going to happen with the fifth one. And I love it that these guys are behind it because I love this movie. Yeah, I it think feels like a perfect gonna... tonal match. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I think they're, they're going to translate perfectly the tone and the style and everything. I'm excited. Yeah, I've heard that, which I assumed it was true. Like, because, you know, like Nev Campbell's coming back, Courtney Cox and David Arquette. 
Is mm -hmm. that, are those the three main ones that are left? And yes. I feel mm -hmm. like there's no way all three of them can make it out. Mm -hmm. Somebody's no. going to die. Yeah. So brace yourself. <laughs> I know. I don't want it to be Dewey. It's the only one I want to live. I don't well, know. That's the I best running it. gag of the franchise is Dewey somehow. Yeah. Oh, it miraculously <laughs> shows up. Yeah. You get stabbed like in the, with the second one, like in the back. Right. And then third one, the knife throws and like hits him in the forehead. Yeah. It's just like, Come on, never Dewey. Dies. Come on. You can Scream like make it five. one Dewey more. Dewey never does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make the subtitle. Please yeah. write it in. See if they'll use that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what they can do with it. Like, I mean, I don't know why people are still wanting to kill Sydney, but I'm excited. I want them to go back to wherever they're from. Like, I want it to be in the hometown again. The OG. I, yeah. What was the name of that place? Woodsboro? I think. Yes, Woodsboro. That's yeah. it. Yes. Such a good movie. Okay. Are we ready to give our ratings? Robert, are you familiar with how we do this? Like Isn't it a light camera? Yes yeah. or no? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty There's simple. There's only one right. I was going to say, not, not hard to figure out. <laughs> no, no. It's so funny. Cause like I've guessed it on uh, horror movie club and they like give like out of five and I'm always like, ah, uh, three and a half. No, four. Uh, no, I like, wait. I don't know. And I'm like, guys, I don't ever do it this way. Just let wait, me how do yes you do? No. How do you do yours, Robert? Like, do we don't really even it? bring up a rating. You normally okay. we have the, the guests will will talk about a movie that they, we are, they already love. So it's just it's kind of a love fest, I guess. Oh, more I love in that, that regard, okay. it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's kind of the opposite of a bad movie podcast, I guess. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I I don't know. I I I've also you know done a lot of movie reviews and stuff, so I'm familiar with the rating scale. It's just yeah, he's a yes or no, Come not on. not yeah. not very hard to get. I'm just real. <laughs> I'm really bad at like gauging like what like. I don't know, like the last one I gave three and a half to Mortuary Collection because I was like, I feel like it's, I really like that. It's so three and me, a half. middle of the road. Like, <laughs> I, I was like, lights, camera, yes to everything. <laughs> and then Oshman and Brian both, I think they gave it like a four or four and a half. And I was like, no, I, I love this movie. Maybe I should be higher. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me adjust. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, just, just do it your way. Lights, camera, yes, or lights, camera, no. <laughs> um, do you, Robert, since you're a guest, do you want to go first, or do you want us to go first? Take the pressure off. Um, you. I I would I definitely would give this lights camera yes. Mm -hmm. I I really like this movie a lot. Uh, I enjoyed it in in theaters. I enjoyed it again now. It's I think it's safe to say the best movie based on a children's game. <laughs> and I'm I'm just hoping that after Scream Five they come back and we get like a dark and gritty hopscotch. Or you're like shoots and ladders, <laughs> heads up, seven up. You're like, <laughs> I don't know, There's like a whole because <laughs> normally you know they always say, oh you can't you know board game don't work it board games don't work as movies with the exception of Clue obviously which is yeah which is right. Really uh, but I feel like this this one proved that you can do a hide or seek hide and seek movie. And make it really good. So it's like I'm kind of wondering what else they can do in that arena now. I feel like I feel like there's a total like I feel like there's opening for that. Like, mm -hmm. and especially in horror, like you can make it's, you can easily make kid stuff creepy. It's better than rebooting the same things every ten years. I mean, at least yeah, there's great. something different. Preach. They tried to do yeah. uh, Blumhouse tried to do that Truth or Dare. That didn't quite work. Yeah. I like the idea they're going for, mm -hmm. but that movie's kind of all over the place. Yeah. But like more in that in that vein, I just feel like there's an area to play in a little bit. Yeah, I like it. It's on to something. All right, Lauren, do you want to go? You want me to go? Yeah, we're gonna go backwards this week. Okay. I like it. Yes. I'm also giving it a lights camera. Yes, um, I like movies like this where they kind of blend horror and comedy. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, but it reminded me a lot of The Babysitter. Um, and the gore in the, it, these movies are gory which I like normally do not stand for, but these kind of movies handle the gore in like a comical way where I'm like, oh my God, they're, expl they're exploding. They're exploding <laughs> everywhere and it's hilarious. So it's a lights camera yes for me. Um, it is a definite lights camera yes for me. Nothing else for Adam Brody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and done. No, um, I actually love the humor added in. I think it's very hard. It's very difficult to do horror and comedy together. It's They're just so opposite. It's hard to mash them up without them butting heads and seeming weird and off. Um, I think they do an excellent job of peppering in the humor, 
along with the gore and there is a lot of gore in this movie um and there's not i feel like there's not a ton of jump scares which i'm actually kind of a fan of because jump scares are pretty they can they have their place but they've been i feel like lately they've been very overused so this was like a pleasant surprise um i liked all the characters it had like enough backstory but it didn't feel like it dragged out too long and you got to know everybody but it didn't it wasn't like you were ever bored. So the movie kept kept you kept you going the whole time. So it's a lights camera yes for me as well. Look at us. I know. Look at us go. Across the board. <laughs> Three LCYs. Um <laughs> All right. Uh, that does it for this week. Before we hop off, I want to give Robert a chance. Well, I want to thank him for being here, first of all. And then I want to give him a chance to tell everybody where they can find you um, social media wise and your podcast and give us a little rundown of what it's about and all that stuff. Okay. So uh, I, my show is called the Crooked Table Podcast. We talk about the world of film from a fresh angle. Uh, every episode, it's me and a guest, and we talk about a movie normally of their choice. I, I, uh, to be honest with you, the show is in a state of evolution, so it's going to the premise may change very soon, and that's all I'll say about that. Things are happening behind the Ooh, scenes. Uh, you can find, but there's. I've been doing the show since 2014. It started as a hobby that I do with my brother, and it got mm -hmm. more streamlined uh, in a couple years ago. So there are 195 something episodes. Oh wow. Wow. Up there for people to check out at crookedtable.com, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcatchers. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Crooked Table. And thanks both of you so much for having me on. This was so much fun to oh. get a chance to talk about this movie. Yeah, yeah it was a blast. thanks for coming. It was fun. Um, so yeah, you guys definitely head on over and check out Robert's podcast, Crooked Table Podcast. Um, as usual, we would love it if you left us a review, if you like the show, preferably on Apple, because they drive everything. Um, you can find us on the socials at Lights, Camera, No, except for Facebook, which is LCN Podcast. If you have any movies that you want us to review, you can always email us at lightscameranoe at gmail.com. Other than that, I think I covered everything, right? We're not- yeah. We don't, we don't have our movie picked out for next Shocking. week. Shocking. <laughs> um, we'll let you guys know. Probably the day of, you know, recording. Probably <laughs> next Wednesday is when we'll tell you what we're doing. We might not even know till then. So just how we do things. But I want to thank everybody for watching slash slash listening. And I hope you tune in next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Later, guys. All right. Well, all right you can stop recording. And I'm going to stop streaming. All right. Thanks, Twitchers. Bye, I Twitchers. I don't know if that's the right <laughs> word. Who was, but... was there? Anybody? Uh, Beanie was there. Let's see. Yeah. Um, Twitchies, maybe? Twitchies Twitch. sounds like. Yeah. Sounds oh, like yeah. Got a nervous <laughs> yeah. Tweakers. But Twitchers, <laughs> Twitchers sounds too much like Twitter. So I'm yeah. like, like I said, yeah. very unfamiliar with Twitch. Now, I, now that you've. <laughs> You've hyped up that sound capabilities. Now I'm like, hmm, should I take the quick table to Twitch? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I have no idea what the terminology is there either. Twitcher sounds like maybe, I don't know, people that do drugs. I don't know. Yeah, that's what, that's what I <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah. All right, bye, Twitchers. Don't do drugs.